Hello, Yelpers. Uh, my name is Claudia. I own a small face paint company called Wild Raspberry Face Painting. Normally, I face paint birthday parties for kids. I do, I've done adult club nights with themes, and I generally take appointments for Halloween. For obvious reasons, I am not doing that this year. Some people are, and they're taking extra precautions and more power to them. I just, it's just a lot. So I am here with you guys. Um, you may also know me as a member of the Yelp Detroit team prior to said weird times. Um, so I worked with Annette in the Detroit um, Metro and really loved it. Love Yelp as a company. Super happy to be a part of your Halloween programming. Um, I'm here today to give you a tutorial on a deer. So thank you to everybody who purchased the face paint kits ahead of time. Um, Silly Farm, one of my favorite companies to buy from. They are a small company. Um, they really go out of their way to make things safe and you can trust the, pro the ingredients that they're putting in the product. And in the world of cosmetics, that's important because um, it's not regulated in the way that a lot of other things are. So it's really important when you're buying cosmetics, when you're buying paint, if you have a particular set of values that you adhere to, that you have to do your own work to research that. Um, so that said, thank you. Um, I'm going to be using some different paints today simply because I already own face paint and I didn't want to purchase a kit, even though that would have been the very best thing to do because then you would be following along exactly. Um, so just wanted to get a little bit of background information first. So these paints that you're working with today are different than some uh, beauty makeup and they're different than stage makeup. They are face paints. So um, beauty makeup often is, you know, a cream that you can move around after you put it on your face. Same with stage makeup. A lot of times they're oil based and very creamy. You can move them around after you place them. These are water activated, much in the way that watercolors are or gouache if you want to be fancy because they're a little opaque. Um, so you activate them with water to the consistency that you want and then you apply them and you don't really want to reactivate them after they are placed on your skin. So there is a slight learning curve to using the paints. Even when I started I've done other mediums and it is tricky to get um, the right amount of water for whatever your purpose is. So I would say as you're getting started, be gentle with yourself because you're probably going to make a big mess and have to wipe it off. Um, that's it. But you know, it's Halloween and we're having fun. It's the spooky season. So whatever. I mean, I have, I know Yelp loves a cocktail. So I have here. Oh, it's backwards because well, I might flip it on. I don't know. I have a cider because it's spooky season and cider makes sense. So okay, back to the paints. So when I work, I'm gonna give you a little. This might be too much information. Maybe you just want to get right into the deer. You can skip ahead. It's fine. You're cool. You're you might be. This might be old news for you. So I keep water in a few different ways. Obviously, if you're just doing this one look and you don't need to know this, then whatever. But maybe you got these and you have kids and you want to keep using them. So I'm going to give you more information than you need because it's also just how I roll. Um, so I keep a tiny spray bottle. I got this in the um, travel section at probably Target because that's where I go the most because there's a good excuse to check out clearance clothes. But... Um, you know, in a travel, whatever, a travel thing. So this is helpful because I can 
take my paint and just lightly mist or I can take my sponge and lightly mist my sponge um because like I said one of the biggest problems when you're getting used to using these paints is that you put too much water or not enough usually too much so the spray bottle is very helpful um I also keep two containers of water uh the reason some people do three which is next level but I do two because I like to have one that I'm dipping dark colors into and one that is basically just for my white um, because you'll learn if your water is dirty and then you go to put your brush or your sponge into the white and it's dirty, you're just, I, I just, I, I swear a lot when that happens. So try not to do that. Um, the other things that you should have in your kit, which I'm realizing now I do not have them all in front of me, so I'm gonna go find them. You should have a sponge. Uh, the sponge is a, your friend. The sponge is my favorite thing, period. I don't know. Um, so the sponge is how you're gonna apply over large areas. You're usually going to be applying very light coats with the sponge. You're gonna be wetting it with your spray bottle or a light or a dip and then you squeeze it out in your water to get very, you don't want it dripping, you want like a lightly damp sponge. Um, I use sponges constantly when I'm face painting. When you get really into it, you can load multiple colors on the sponge and do rainbows or whatever. But when you see like a tiger at the fair and it's yellow in the middle and it fades out to a really cool darker color sponge. Um, one thing I'm gonna say here, always work light to dark because other mediums you can, you know, you start, you, this is a difference between this paint and beauty paint. Cause like with beauty makeup, you would do a foundation and then you might contour. Um, you could do highlights over it and shadows, whatever. No, face paint, light to dark. And it just, I mean, I could go into it, but that's just a rule. Um, you should also have a round paintbrush. So my very, very favorite is the Low Cornell. Um, these are called Golden Taclon. Taclon is the acrylic, or is the um, synthetic yada yada bristles. Thank you to me. Thank you to me. Um, but I have many brands. I have, I'm not, you know, I don't differ, I don't discriminate with those. And I, and if you're at uh, Michael's or something, I buy this, they look like this. They're Royal and something, Lang something. I, they have a sticker on them still. These are super cheap. You want like, a, you want brushes made for acrylics or watercolors cause you want them to hold a lot of paint. Um, you should have one in your kit. I, my favorite size is always a number four, but I have in my face paint kit, I have two, three, four, five. I think are the ones I use the most. So the nice thing about, this is what you do. This is what I do most of, most of my details with. And this will be your friend too. Um, if you want to practice, here, I'm gonna show you. This is a lot of times when I'm working really fast, I'll sponge large areas and then come in with black and white and it looks fantastic and it's done. So you, this looks kind of dirty because glitter never comes out of paint ever. Um, and also I haven't opened these since before COVID. That's because it honestly made me sad. <laughs> so um, so what I do is I dipped the this in water and I rub it around and the consistent, consistency you want takes not a ton of water to get there. It's almost like the consistency of craft paint is kind of what you're going for. And so I'll work one little area. You don't really need to wet the whole thing. You just, you can tell I have little divots there where I use a certain area for a while. So the, I'm gonna show you why your round brush is great. And again, this might be too much information. Sorry, but not sorry. Um, so the nice thing about a round brush is you can use just the tip, I said it, um, and do, this is really hard to do, but you can also lay it down, do a fat line, 
But here's the thing. You can go like thin to fat to thin. You can wiggle to, you know, you can, it gives you a lot of, um, gives you a lot of flexibility. And in that way, your line work, the line work is really what a lot of times makes face paint look really cool. So here's what we're going to be using it for today, and that's dots. So if I use just the tip of my brush here, I can do a little dot. This is hard. And it's not perfectly round. That's okay. Um, if I want a bigger dot, what I do is I start like I'm going to do a little one, and then I bounce it. I don't know if you could see that. It's not perfect. Oops. Bounce it. And if I want it even bigger, I keep I mean, might press, and those aren't perfectly round, but those are the dots that we're going to be doing today. Um, so you can practice those a few times if you want. But I just want to show you. So that's our round brush. And that's why these kits that you're getting from Silly Farm are so awesome. Because you really have everything in there that you need. My favorite, I'll show you my favorite line before I'm done. Um, my favorite is for tigers. <laughs> All right, that's cheetah, I guess. That's a cheetah. But I do the same kind of thing for tigers. Um, you can see when I want a big fat area, it's just the tip, just the tip, I'll bounce it, just the tip again. And then I might add a couple little. And the little dots are your friend too, because those tiny details kind of bring everything into focus make it look super fancy even though it's just you know really for me not that hard I don't want to say it's not that hard because it like I said there is a learning curve but you can also see how long I'm working with that brush loaded with the paint that's the right consistency um which is why these are great brushes and when I'm working on a job the longer I can work with one brush the better because my, you know, I make my money by getting those kids in the chair, getting them out of the chair. Not a really matter. That doesn't matter to you today. But I just want to say that's a, you know, that's why, that's why I'm not bad at my job. Um, all right, let's move along. So we got that. We got that. I'm going to take a minute to get my area set up for the deer. And I'm going to show you I made something really cool to go along with this. I'm really excited to share that with you. I'll be right back with you. Oh, hello. Nice to see you again. I'm back here. I didn't have my sponges. I found them. So in your kit, you should have sponges. Um, I don't remember if the ones you have are round or half of round. But this is what mine look like. Um, they're going to look dirty. They're not dirty. It's just that over time they tend to yellow, but they also just stain. I wash them, I bleach them. Don't worry, I let them dry all the way after I bleach them. But um, you don't want no bacteria just like up in there, it's really gross. So um, mine, the ones that I buy, if you didn't get the kit and you're buying things on your own, um, I like, I think the link is in the Yelp um, info that Annette sent out, but um, I like to cut them in half. And then I also take scissors and just kind of cut along the edges because I'm OCD and also, I'm not really OCD. I'm sorry to anybody who's neurodivergent. I need to learn to stop saying that. But um, detail oriented. But I, uh, it just gives, you can like hold it different ways and there are no corners. Just, it's just what I like. Uh, you don't have to do that. I like it. Um, so there are about a million deer tutorials on the internet. So feel free to pick and choose things you like from this. Um, you can change the color too. Any medium color. You know, I get kids all the time that want pink everything. So boys and girls, they want pink. So um, let's get into it. So I'm going to start by giving my sponge here a little mist. And we talked earlier that we were going to go what? Light to dark. 
light to dark. So the lightest is going to be our white. And so this has not been activated at all with water. So the first time it might get kind of like runny. I like to, to roll it around. Um, you don't want it too wet. So actually as I rub it, it kind of is drying up a little bit. Uh, so the other thing I like to do, and my arm is always covered as I'm working, um, but I will test it here. And what I'm looking for is that I'm getting, I'm getting a nice, like, it doesn't look that even on the camera actually. That's why I'm testing it on my arm. But you don't want, see, I'm not, it's not dripping. It's not, it's just less is more with the sponging. Less is more with how much paint you want to come off. All right, so I'm gonna start, what I'm gonna do is this whole area. The other thing about the sponge is you can paint with it. You can rub or you can, you can rub like that or you can bat it. So, and I shouldn't need to put more on this. Like I said, less is more, less is more. This is gonna look crazy at first. This is looking crazy. This is looking crazy. And you can go more or less with the paint, depending on, you know, what your comfort level is. I think one of the reasons the deer is so popular is, A, you look cute when you do it. So girls can, uh, grown-up girls can do it and feel like they sexy. I am maybe in the minority here, but I love a sexy costume. I know it's cliche, but I think there's something funny about it. Like you can take an everyday object and make it sexy for Halloween. That's performance art in my opinion. So it looks a little crazy right now. Trust the process, trust the process. Okay, what I'm gonna do I don't like to double dip my sponges normally because it makes your paints messy and then you have to deal with it in the future. And then you have to like clean them off, which kind of, you lose paint and I'm cheap. Also, it's all about the bottom line when you're running a little business. So I'm going in pink next. And if you have red and you have white, you can put white on your sponge, then a little bit of red. And I'm just gonna, Also, still look crazy. Still look crazy. And I don't have any makeup on right now except a little lip, lip color because I just couldn't come on camera looking like I just got off work, which I did. And right now I am painting faces at the Greenfield Village in Detroit. And if you're from somewhere else in the country, Henry Ford collected other people's houses because he cray and he put them all in one place um but they decorate for halloween and it's really really fun and i get to do makeup there and i feel so lucky every time i'm there and i do not have to but i walk around almost every day so it's a little bit late when i'm starting this video because i couldn't help but go smell the hot cider and the bonfires I just can't, I can't help myself. Um, next, I'm going into this. So you guys have a brown. That's perfect. I have one somewhere. I was being a bit lazy and I'm just working with the paints that I have in my setup right now. Um, so any medium color, this is a bronze. So it's basically a brown but with a little shimmer to it. But I'm going to come, oh, it's hard to see in the camera. Mm. 
this one I might have to reload a little bit. That is really hard to see in the camera. The reason you go light to dark is that I can go over the white with a bit of the bronze, but I cannot go over the bronze with the white very easily. So in case you didn't pick up on that. And I wish there was more method to my madness and I could really explain why I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna putting the brown down. And your brown might be darker, it might be lighter, depending on your skin tone. So if you have a really dark skin, um, some of these color choices wouldn't make sense. Uh, you know, you wouldn't want to go in heavy with white because that's going to really look gray. So if you wanted to, if you have really dark skin, you might want to choose the brown to go where my white is and pick a lighter cut like flippy flappy the colors a little um which is you know something to think about i didn't mean to go down there i'm just trying to make it even i kind of feel like I should. so i have ears so i'm not painting ears on my forehead because You'll see what I did for you all. All right, and I used pretty much half of my sponge, so I'm gonna use the other half. Oh, I do have a dark brown. Oh, actually, I lied. I lied to you. I'm gonna go back in with my brown. Yep, that's it. Okay. Now, this is the part I think is fun. Um, so I'm dipping, I'm, you can see, dipping, this is my dark water, my dirty water. Fully wet brush. And I'm going to go back and forth back and forth. When I first started face painting, I would swirl the brush. Then I learned that my brushes didn't last that long. So my nose is looking crazy. Let's blend. There we go. Um, it was shiny. I couldn't tell at first. So what's so cute about a deer? The nose. Let me get up on you. This is really hard to do in reverse in the camera. And with the nose ring, which children, I forget that I have this until moments like this. Or until my three-year-old nephew is like, she has a nose ring. I have to explain to his mom or explain to him in front of his mom. So you're basically painting the underside of your nose. You can also just go straight across and it still looks like a dang deer. Weird. This is the weird. Is this the weirdest thing I've done today? I don't know. I don't know if it is. It might be. You know what else I like about a deer? Is this line. Not everybody does this line. Oof, boogies. I'm trying to remember if it's the top lip or the bottom lip of the deer. I think it's the top.
So I'm the only one using my paints at this point, so I'm just using my brush, but I have uh, disposable makeup wands when I want to do stuff right around my mouth, usually. Uh, Well, it's not perfect, but, oh, should, I was going to tell you, don't close your mouth. And what did I do? Closed my mouth. Um, of course, I don't have anything to wipe it off. I might try a sponge. Usually I keep baby wipes on hand. We've come this far. Okay. So, can you tell that I'm just winging it? I guess I am. I am just winging it. So if you wash your brown brush off, this is not the order I should have done this in. I should have done my eyes first. Tutorial fail. I hope at the very least you're entertained. So we got a round brush here. This one's a little smaller. No good reason. I just didn't want to wash the black one off because I want to use it again. <laughs> so you're going to have to wash yours. I'm sorry. Um, this is really hard to do. Now, if you have liquid eyeliner or whatever, you can use that, but honestly, this stuff is, I mean, it's not waterproof, but I like this better. Sometimes if I do a party and there's a young girl there who's like, I'm too cool for face paint, I'll get out like my neons and give her um, neon eyeliner. And then I'll say, you're ready for TikTok. That's it. I just blinked and messed that up. So I'm just going to make this one a little bigger. Wow, that's hard to look at with that white on my eyelashes. This is the part that scares me. I'm out of practice. Deep breath. Just take a deep breath and go for it. Things like that, long lines, are much easier in one go. I used to he he and then you just see that when you're
Ooh, that was rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's Halloween. I have ugh, the blinkiest blinky eyes. If I was somebody else, I would hold. this point you could do your brows you could be high fashion um, I'm just going through my brow with the paint because I'm not high fashion Maybe I'll do a couple of these. All right. We're getting there. Um, you know, a lot of like tutorials you'll see online are all about the contour. So if you wanted to come back, you could go in with the dark here. I usually don't like to do that because I feel like you're gonna kind of mess up the lines. Okay. Yeah, that was unnecessary. Now I'm going with my white. Again. Back and forth. Bum, 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 bum. Back and forth, back and forth. The other thing I do sometimes is I will kind of roll my brush a little bit. Um, and what that does is it gets those bristles nice in line so you have your nice point for this part. So remember how we talked about bouncing? So we're going to go you see how some of them are light some of them are light and some of them you're gonna bounce. So another thing, groups of three are just a little bit more pleasing. I don't know what it is. Maybe one of you can tell me. Um, so sometimes if I don't wanna think like, oh, I want it to be perfect, if I'm trying, anyway, what I do is I'll do three big ones, like deep bounce, deep bounce, deep bounce and then come back around it and do the littler ones. And then that allows you to kind of do a couple little ones to like fade out your cluster, if that makes sense. So, and I'll kind of look at both sides. Like these ones are a little lower, those ones are a little higher. Okay, my designs are not symmetrical. My face isn't symmetrical, um, so don't be too hard on yourself. Nobody's going to notice if the dots on one side are exactly the same as the dots on the other. And you can go crazy with these dots. You can do them all over. I'm going to probably do some here. I might do a few here. 
something a very brilliant drawing instructor told me one time is half of a good piece is just knowing when you're done. So I'm holding this in a weird way because I'm looking in the mirror or in not even, I don't even have a mirror. I just have this iPhone. Oh, that's rough. Didn't mean to do that. We're going to make it work. Okay, that looks maybe not perfect. Do as I say, not as I do. That cluster is weird looking. Maybe I'll do. Maybe I'll do a couple more up here. That's too many dots. I did too many dots. I always do that. I always, like I said, do as I say, not as I do. So, I mean, at this point, this looks good to me. Like, I am a deer. Um, if you want, I mean, we'll see how this looks. But you come in with a little brown and do the tip. Kind of fade it out a little. You could do some fake eyelashes. Um, woo. You could do some glitter. So, hold on a sec. Okay, so in your kit, you should have a poofer of glitter. Um, I believe that you have the Mama Clown Rainbow, which when I'm working, when I'm doing face paint in the wild, I do, I use pretty much that glitter all the time. Today I have this gold, so I'm gonna use it. Um, I'm gonna close my eyes. And you just poof it. Um, if you do it on stuff that's wet, that's best. Oh my God, I'm gonna come to bed. Ryan's gonna be super excited. Um, yeah. I also, let me show you something real special. Oh, that, it's not. Hello, I have, so these are cosmetic glitters that are um, chunky glitters. So you can buy these from the face paint places I recommend it or from, uh, sometimes on Etsy. Again, you might not always know what you're getting. Um, I buy loose glitter and then put it in um, aloe, like just aloe from you know, our big box store here is Meyer. They sell it. Uh, this does technically reactivate the paint, so you have to be very careful just to lay it on top and not pull up too much of your paint. So, yeah. So there's a lot to be said about glitter and sustainability. Um, it's a microplastic, so people have, I mean, there are mixed feelings about it. It's obviously not great long term in the in the waterways um i bought a bunch and i'm gonna use it until it's gone uh you can buy bio glitter there are, there's a lot to be said about bio glitter it is um better than plastic however it does not degrade in the life within the life of a fish. So there really is no great way to do that. Um, I guess what I'm saying is if you're worried about it choking fish, it still chokes fish, sorry. Um, anyway, that's uplifting, happy Halloween. Okay guys, I have fake eyelashes and if I was going out to a party, you bet your bottom, you bet your butt I would put them on. Um, what, you might ask, is this? 
This is what I made for you. So, the, yeah. Hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Come back for more. Mm. 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 Mm -mm -mm. Bye, help. Okay, I'm watching things and I just want to say this looks bad when I turn my head to the side. That's not blended, but I couldn't see that, guys. I couldn't see it. Also, I wanted to point out that you can, I worked mostly on the top of my face. Um, you can take some of your brown and you could start, what I like to do is start at my um, sideburns and you wanna think the middle of your ear to the, like from this middle of your ear to the top of the base of your ear. So right here, and pull it down towards here. So, and then, and down from there. So this is another step you could do. Because as I was watching that video and I kept turning to the side, I could just see things that I could not see when I was looking at it head on. Again, I'm going to go to this area here, to there. And below. Mm, that's better. Thanks for watching.